Hello and welcome to the Fedora Files. I am Gregory Fedora and with me today is Susan Alexander. Thank you, Susan, for coming on. Thank you, Gregory, for having me. Yes. Now, Susan, you, there's a, so many things you and I could probably go talk about and go down a many rabbit holes, like in, in talking, because I, I know you quite well, well, as well as anyone possibly could know you, because you're just, yes. there's so much about you and fascinating things. But mm -hmm. you had an older brother who has passed away, but yes. he was he was a dancing phenom. And I know about him through my wife and others. And he was just a fascinating individual. And I, I really wanted to get his life story out there. I know it's been out there in documentaries and other forms, but I just I just think this story is so phenomenal that when people hear it, it might inspire them to try something. Because Absolutely. Yeah, because he started at a very young age. Can you Yes. It's a, let, let's get right now. His name was Tom, Tom Waters. Thomas yeah. Franklin Waters. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when did he begin his adventures in dance? How old was he? I guess he was maybe eight or nine years old mm -hmm. when he started dancing. Uh, Betty Lou Cavalier had a dance studio on West Potomac Street in Brunswick, Maryland. And it was right up the hill from where we lived on Walnut Street in Brunswick. And he was very interested in dance, especially tap dance. Mm -hmm. And he persuaded our parents to let him study dance. And he studied for several years and he really caught on to it. He was very artistic and he, he, he just picked it up very quickly. And then when he was 12 years old, he decided that he was ready to open up his own dance studio. Now, now and, so that, that's to me, that's great. He's 12 years old and he's like, I'm going to start teaching people how to dance because I've been doing it three years. Yes. I know what to do. Yes. And he mm -hmm. did it. Basically. He, yes, he did. Yes, he did. And uh, I took dance from him. <laughs> our, our nephew took dance from him and we had some cousins and, they all studied dance and a lot of people, a lot of friends mm -hmm. at, from Brunswick studied dance and we're, we're still in touch. And he went on to study ballet and ballroom and acrobat. And he taught all of those dances. Mm -hmm. at, at, that was at the studio on Petersville Road in Brunswick. I believe mm -hmm. it's now an apartment. Okay. But it was it was probably a 20 by 15 space. Oh wow. Wasn't very big. But my my father put up the ballet bar in there and put up a mirror. And it, back then you used a record player. Mm -hmm. And and I remember one Christmas, my parents got him a reel to reel tape recorder. That was a big thing. Oh yeah. And he utilized that and it just bl kept blossoming. And that studio became too small because when you teach acrobatics, you have to have a large space. Mm -hmm. So that's when he moved his studio from Petersville Road to West Potomac Street in Brunswick. And it was huge. Oh, wow. We used to go down there and that's where the acrobats would go to practice because there was so much room. Mm -hmm. That was like probably 50 feet by 30 feet. It wow. was, it was big. It was big. You could run down and do your round off backhand spring with room to spare. Yes. It was fabulous. So, and, and at this time, how old would he have been like that? He that was he's probably uh, 17 or 18 when he opened that one. See, and so it's only just like five years later and he's expanding. Yes, expanding. Yes. Is. And then probably when he was, I guess, 20, he decided he wanted to open up another studio in Frederick. All right. So he opened up a studio on North Market Street. And back then it was down by the fountain. I, I just... I don't know if the fountain is still there. I think there is some greenery in where they had the fountain and the WFMD radio station was at that end of North Market Street as well. Right. And so for those who don't know, Frederick is a much larger 
town than Brunswick. And, right. and like Brunswick and Frederick is in Western or central Western Maryland. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. That's and correct. So, so, I mean, it's basically one of the larger cities in that this port, that portion of Maryland. Yes. So he, he's super expanding. He's going from his hometown yes. to now to a town like uh, about 15 miles away. Yes. Right. Yes. Sorry. Right. Yes. Keep going. Yes. So he taught dance there. He taught uh, basic ballroom at Frederick Community College. And I was teaching at the Brunswick studio then. So then I was 13 years old and teaching in Brunswick. And he was about 20 and teaching in Frederick. And um, he even set me up as I was, when I was 16, I taught ballroom at Frederick Community College, basic ballroom. Oh, wow. But then- um, You had all the then, college boys dancing with you. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> in my dreams, maybe, no. Um, but then uh, in 1974, he was contacted by the International Cultural Dance Center of New York. Right. They wanted him to teach dance a six week semester of dance in Greece. Oh, wow. That was that was thrilling. That was yeah. absolutely thrilling. I do have a I do have the letter that I sent to him while he was in Greece. Mm -hmm. And um, while he was over there, war between between Greece and Turkey broke out. So he's and in Greece, he was, yes. and the war's going on, and you guys are all back in the States. Yes, and we were not doing well, mm -hmm. but by just by chance and luck and, and God, someone was able to smuggle him out, oh, wow. put him on a plane back to New York. Mm -hmm. By the time he got to New York, he phoned us, and we picked him up at Dulles Airport. What a oh, wow. relief. Oh, what crazy. a relief. Yes, but he had a wonderful time while it lasted. Yeah, well, I mean, well, that's, I mean, it's really fascinating that his dancing gave him the chance to go international and go somewhere else. And absolutely. And, and it all started when he's nine and it just, it, it snowballed and it yes. seems like, like he, I, to me, like to know anyone that at nine and 12 to start a business, I mean, that actually mm -hmm. propelled him even further. I mean, what, yes. What, what what then went on with him? He he got back from Greece. He's back. He got back from Greece, and um, he I don't remember exactly what year it was. He I, he started dating his wife Karen, mm -hmm. and they got married, and then he, they decided to build a home in Mount Pleasant, which is right outside of Frederick. It's between mm -hmm. Frederick City and Liberty Town. Okay. And in that house, he built two dance studios. Right, so he was keeping it going. Keeping it yeah. going. Yeah. And they had two children and the children were dancing and they helped teach. His wife helped teach. And uh, be prior to that, I'm ahead of myself. He used to go to people's homes in Frederick mm -hmm. and teach ballrooms ballroom dancing there would be seven to eight couples and they go once a week and they dance maybe the cha-cha the samba the waltz the foxtrot and um i mentioned this before he he also taught uh at fcc mm -hmm. he was a member of dance masters of america which you must pass an exam to be a member and he took his group he created a group. It was called the Dance Contraption. Mm -hmm. Many students, it was, I remember taking the class on Saturday morning. It was a killer class. Mm -hmm. It was, I think it was the three hour class. About an hour and a half of that class, you were at the bar, the ballet bar, exercising and stretching. And I remember... <laughs> Since I'm his sister, I could get away with this. Oh, we did things. And, and, and you just left there. You felt good and stretched at the time. Mm -hmm. But it, it was very, huh, it was hard. It was very yeah. hard. And I remember him walking past me and me looking up at him and saying, I hate you. <laughs> and he just laughed. Uh -huh. yeah. Do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it was it was good. It was a good experience, and I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I was curious. He, I mean, he's taught. I, I know because I, I I know his story somewhat. But a lot of his students, you know, not only you know love dance, but they went on to do a careers. Yes. Like and made it, and they're they're still out there today, either. Yes studying or teaching or mm -hmm. there uh, i know there's some that are in new york performing like yes uh, some rockettes or, or some yes correct? is that some of his students went on to be rockettes he has uh, a young man who was one of the spider men mm -hmm. oh, in, yeah. on broadway yeah and they they're just they, we have some te still teaching dance in frederick county okay and, and it's just the love and the desire and the drive. Yeah. And I think he also has some that were in Las Vegas. As yes. Well, I think. Yes, I, absolutely. I, I think you've told me. Showgirls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. He, hey, there you go. Showgirls. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't go wrong there. No, <laughs> no you can't. <laughs> so what would you say? I mean, I know he I, I mean, it all started with his him at nine and obviously your parents backing him because I'm assuming when he did his first studio, your parents kind of had kind of helped back him to start it. So they had. Oh, certainly. So, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, the his the fact that your mom and dad were like, yeah, here, 12 year old son, start a dance studio. They yes, obviously saw the passion he had and, you know, bet on him and he yes, and then he continued to bet on himself. Yes, he and, did. And what would you say is his his gr big legacy in your mind like what is something that he will always be remembered for like a oops i'm oh, sorry yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> i would say that he was very creative mm -hmm. he was driven and he didn't let anything stop him or slow him down he loved the kids. Mm -hmm. He loved the students and they loved him. He there there is a difference between demanding respect and commanding respect. Mm -hmm. He was an individual that could command respect with ease. Mm -hmm. And and the children and the parents they knew that. And they were they were easy to work with because they knew that he was in it because he loved it. And he wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. He wanted to develop them as dancers and and be able to tell them that, yes, you have confidence. And they believed that they did. And they did. Mm -hmm. That was that was fabulous. Yeah, and he probably he probably helped so many that beyond the ones who went on to make it a career. But there are probably a lot of kids who he, he helped. Uh, nurture and grow where that were once kind of more sh shy and it helped build their uh, self esteem through dance. I know that. Yes. I mean, dance does do that when it, it pulls that out of you, like the mm -hmm. creative side, but then it's like, as you grow and get better, you're like, Oh my gosh, I can do this. And if you can do yes, like I've taken dance and mm -hmm. if you can do a few dance moves. You feel like you're amazing. You feel like you're Fred Astaire. Yes. Like you can do a shuffle ball change and you think you mm -hmm. are, uh, what's his name? Gregory Hines. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you do one mm -hmm. thing and you're like, oh, I can, I'm Gregory Hines. Yes. You do the Irish, which I can't mm -hmm. do. And you mm -hmm. think you're the best dancer in the world. And I can't yes. do the Irish. So I'm not the best dancer mm -hmm. in the world. But. but it's, it instills confidence. Mm -hmm. It instills confidence and grace. Yes. And to have those two things going for you says a lot. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Like you, you were yeah, obviously a sister, but you were mm -hmm. a student of his. But then a colleague, because you, mm -hmm. you were you had taken over the Brunswick School, kind of. You were teaching yes. there while he did. Fred, what is like one of your favorite? And maybe it's not at that point, but a favorite memory you have of either learning from Tom or working with Tom, that you always when you think about it just brings back a, a smile to you. <laughs> There's my a laugh. <laughs> I remember in the little studio on Petersville Road, mm -hmm. he wanted me to do some back bends. And I thought it was too many back bends. So he had his back turned. 
he had the window open and I crawled out the window and, <laughs> and went home and told our mother, boy, did she ream him out when he got, <laughs> but I, I did learn from that. I did learn. And um, eventually I was able to do them, but not that day, <laughs> but, and um, we danced together. We would do duets mm -hmm. and we danced together and we had fun doing it. There were, there was one time when we did a jitterbug that we did not know what we were going to do until we got out on that stage. Oh, wow. And I had to, so to speak, follow him. I was, I was supposed to follow his lead. And amazingly, I did. And I guess it was because we had danced together mm -hmm. so much that I could tell by his movements what he was going to be leading into. Oh, wow. But that was, that was fabulous. And then another funny, not funny, yes, funny, was <laughs> when we were at the Brunswick studio on West Potomac Street, mm -hmm. we were practicing acrobat and I was doing a round off back handspring and I went to jump back and I jumped back onto my head. Ooh. And I just immediately laid down on the mat and I thought, oh, my God, you have broken your neck. You just lie here still in case you have severed anything. And he turned around. He was so upset. He called the ambulance and then he called our mother. This is the funny part. She says, did you break her arm? He says, no, I broke her neck. <laughs> One funny, but it's funny now. <laughs> At the and, time, it was probably frightening, but <laughs> yes. So, and we had to, I was okay. I just sprained my neck and we had dance convention the very next day. So oh. I was in a neck brace and tap dancing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but that we, must have we been did, a sight. <laughs> it was, it was fun though. It was fun. And it's just, one of those things that you don't want to ever forget. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ever forget that because it was funny. And it, we had lots of memories. I taught him how to drive a stick shift. Oh, wow. That was, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You should have been there. <laughs> so so he, he taught you how to do back bends and back handsprings and you taught him how mm -hmm. to drive a car. Yes, I taught him how to drive a stick. Mm -hmm. yeah, so see, that's a fair trade-off, I think. Mm -hmm. And I remember we used he when he lived, he lived by himself uh, off of Route 180. And we invited him over to my mother's, and he was going to make a spun sugar pear pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he he was late. He was very late. And he came in and he had the, the sponge sugar and he said, I, next time I will buy the pie crust. I used an entire five pound bag of flour trying to make a crust. <laughs> that was good. That was good. He said, and I had to clean the mess up off the floor from trying to spin the, the sugar onto the pear pie. Oh, wow. I said, oh, I wish I'd have been there. <laughs> you can teach kids to spin, but you can't teach sugar. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I'm curious, like from like knowing Tom, I didn't really ever get to meet him. I'd only heard about him. And uh, what would you think if he was still alive now and looking out at like where his students were and where, what they're all doing, like, cause I know many do own like dance studios in this area, but all, all across the country there there's dance studios that happen because mm -hmm. of him. And there's, and I know many people don't may not understand that dance masters of America. That's like the largest dance. What, what would it be considered association association mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. United States and that he, he influenced that for many years. I believe he was president mm -hmm. for a while. Of yes. That. And, yes. Uh, but what would, what do you think he would be thinking, say now, because dance has exploded more. There are many shows about dancing and stuff. If he was here today, what was, what do you think his thoughts would be on what is where his students are and where dance is in America today? 
Oh, I think he would be so proud of his students and he would be very thankful that dance has grown so. Mm -hmm. He always was interested in different things, not just, not just tap, but the technique, um, different ways to interpret tap dance, he constantly making up new, new steps, new combinations. And he would be real, very excited, very excited and very thankful that he was allowed to pursue his dream. Mm -hmm. Very thankful and very thankful that he got to meet as many people and touch as many lives as he did. Yes. And he, and he did. Now, if there was someone out there right now who has, like, it may not be dance, but has a passion for something. And what is some advice you think Tom would give them or what you would give them if about pursuing it? What, what would you say to them? Or what do you think he would say to them, whether it was dance or not, like something they're true. Cause he was passionate about dance at the age of nine and went on mm -hmm. to amazing things. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people, they get something they're passionate about, but then they're afraid or the world just, Oh, you can't do that. You know, but right. what, what do you think he would tell someone who mm -hmm. has a passion for something mm -hmm. to do? Don't be afraid. Take it a little at a time. Find as many connections as you can. Other people who are interested in what you're interested in that, that can help you because there will be hurdles along the way and you will have to deal with many things and being able to deal with it, to laugh it off, to just say, okay, this happened, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to keep going and I'm not letting anything stop me and I'm going to make it. I will make it. Yes. That, that's, Drive. That, that Drive is, is very important and taking your time is very important. Yes. That, and that's all good advice. And I, I think mm -hmm. people need to think that way more. I think a lot of times people get so sucked into the mundane of life mm -hmm. and they let their passions go away and they just think about, Oh, I, I need to find, I need just need to find a job to pay bills and they just right. let it, let it slowly slip away. And then you have, there's many people who are just doing a job to, mm -hmm. and it, they're not doing what they love. And I, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, to me, it's sad to see that, especially yes. because I have friends who growing up, I was like, man, that person's really good. At this is, and they're like, Oh, that was just a hobby. It's like, why was it just a hobby? Why mm -hmm. was it just it? Why didn't you make it more? And they, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it is the drive and the, the fear, I think they're mostly it's fear. They're afraid yes. that, that they won't, they can't. And absolutely. And I guess we all have to be kind of like a nine or 12 year old child because they're fearless as Tom was. And he's like, I'm going to start a dance studio. Like at, mm -hmm. at my age saying, I'm going to start a dance studio. I immediately think of, okay, the cost, this, this, this. I was like, and suddenly mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, forget it. I'm not doing mm -hmm. that. And I can't dance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> So, yes, you can. <laughs> I, well, I mean, not that well. I can't teach dance. How about that? I, I don't oh, think I... You never know. Yeah. Okay, that's it. I'm going to start a dance studio. Okay, go for it. All right. Well, I, I do want to thank you for your time because I, I told you I'd keep it under a certain amount of time and I'm watching my clock. And I know okay. you're, you you got busy things to do. You got to go make cookies and stuff because you're also a phenomenal <laughs> yeah. baker which I might oh, have to have you. you come back on and talk about that. Cause I've had, you. Oh, that things. would be fun. Yes. yes. That like would be some fun. of your favorite holiday. Confectionaries. Oh, yes. Pumpkin pie is coming up soon. Oh, well, I'm going to have I to. Just, I just bought some pumpkin loaf cake the other day. Entenman's has finally put it out and it caught my eye. And so I ripped it right off the shelf. Nice. <laughs> and it's, and you ate it all. I ate a piece on the way home. I just ripped the sack open and tore a piece off. <laughs> nice. You didn't even save it for me. That's that's what hurt. Well, there's one piece left. Right. I'll, I'll, be, I, I'll be on my way over. As soon as this is uh, done, okay. I'm coming. I'm driving over. <laughs> All right. But, that'll be fine. But again, thank you. And thank you for coming and telling Tom's story. Because it, it is, to me, one of the most... To me, it's just fascinating and inspiring to hear He what was he a did. very very inspiring for person and he was a good good person yes and and he and he never stopped even in his late, later years as he was fell ill he yes. didn't he didn't give up he he continued the music music was a wonderful thing 
-hmm. with someone who has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. He was still able to keep time with the music and and wave his arms back and forth. Yes, yes. wonderful. Well, again, thank you for coming on. And for those of you, you who uh, are listening, if you have that passion, don't let it die nurture it and grow and, and be like that nine or 12 year old child and pursue it with all of your gusto and see where it takes you because like tom it took him out of the country and all mm-hmm. over the country and so go for it yeah go as far as you can mm-hmm. and as always stay safe and keep searching Check out FedoraCRT.com today.